the deep, calling to the deep, that the noise of thy water stop, O Lord, the deep, calling to the deep. What kind of a thirst could we think was in us tonight? We as Pentecostal people, where are we getting to? What kind of a thirst is in us? What kind of a thirst is in me? What kind of thirst is in you? Don't try to hush that holy thirst for God. Years ago when they used to have gold out here in the mountains. I read a story many years ago. It's always stuck with me. It said there's a, a prospector went out here somewhere beyond the mountains here was prospecting for gold and he struck a rich claim. And uh, he come back uh, thinking when he got to the city what he would be his troubles is all over and and he, uh, he tried to, to say, uh, tomorrow I'll get in and I'll, this one day's journey, he'd be into the city and, and he'd have the gold and he had big sacks full of it. He had a dog with him, not comparing now the dog to the Holy Spirit, but as I'm making an illustration, but this a dog through the night, the prospector laid upon his bed and, and he began to think, now tomorrow I'll, I'll take all my gold in, I'll become just what I've always wanted to be. I, I, I always want to be a rich man. I, I want to own fine things and so forth. And, and then this dog began to bark and because there was an enemy approaching. And he, uh, he went out there and he said, Shut up! And so the dog quieted down and no more he got back in bed he started like he's going to go to sleep and the dog started again just jumping up the chain. And he went to the door again and said, Shut up! I want you to know that tomorrow I'm a rich man, see. And that was his great dreams. But the dog started barking again. And finally he got so discouraged he went and got his shotgun and shot the dog and killed it. He said, I don't have no more use for you anyhow. Tomorrow, I'm a rich man. I'll become a rich man tomorrow. And he set the gun down in the corner, turned his back over to the door, went to sleep. And the man had been following him for days, slipped in, and killed him. He wasn't a rich man. See? He stopped that warning buzzer that was trying to tell him his life was at stake. Brother, sister, you'll never be able to, don't never try to hush that holy calling in your heart, see, by joining a church, by reciting a creed, by belonging to a certain organization. There's only one thing can satisfy it, that's the person, Jesus Christ. As a heart paineth for the water, so my soul thirsts after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for the living God. See, there's something in you that wants to see the moving of God. Your soul thirsts for it. Don't stop anything short of that. Don't let some pastor tell you you just have to shake his hand, join the church, or belong to this organization. Don't you kill that holy hush. It's warning you someday will come when you'll come down to the end of the road. Like a little lady in our city we come from, she told her, a little girl went up there at church and a very fine little girl. And she used to come down the street. She had long hair, you know, and her hair, hair pulled back like a slick of the peeled onion. Nearly, and her face looked no makeup on it. This girl used to make fun of her said, if you didn't have that 
flat-headed preacher you got up there speaking to me. <laughs> said, uh, said, you can look like something decent, but you look like something out of an antique shop. No, oh, she just really raked her over the coals. Every time she could see her like that, I said, our pastor's broad-minded. I said, he, he, he knows uh, them, that, that, why you do like that, that don't mean anything. How you dress or think. It does. God's Bible says it does. We shall live by every word. So, this little girl never paid a bit of attention to her. Well, no, she's a missionary now. So then, this, uh, this young lady took a social disease and she died. A friend of mine pumped the embalming fluid in her. When she was dying, he told me, he said, after she was dead, he kept smelling the fluid. She had a hole eating her side. Social disease. He said, didn't even, even her parents didn't know what was wrong with her. And she died. But before she died, she taught Sunday school. And all of her little Sunday school group come in. They wanted to see her when she went off to heaven. The angels come and packed her away. And her pastor outside smoking a cigarette walking up down the hall in the hospital. And they was all going to sing when she was going to die. You know, they know she had to die. Doctor said she's dying. So there's all going to see the angels come pack her way and all at once when she faced the reality. Now she was a loyal church member. She was a Sunday school teacher. And a loyal church member of a fine big denominational church. But when she would start to struggle death struck her. Her eyes bulged out and she said, I'm lost. She said, I'm lost. Go get the pastor. He put his cigarette out and walked in. He said, here, 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 here. We'll get the doctor and give you a high force. So I don't want no hypo. Said you deceiver of man. I'm dying and I'm going to hell and I'm lost because you failed to tell me the truth. Go get that little good used girl and bring her up here to me real quick. She's right. Wait till you face the reality one. Don't you try to stop that holy hush. Don't you blast it away with some modern educational double barrel shotgun. You listen to that warning of the Holy Ghost tonight. It's warning you, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, and he is the word. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. A counselor, prince of peace, mighty God is he. Oh, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise.
Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is here. 